the half square antenna. I'd never tried it before. Could this be the answer? 3 dB gain in a garden less than 40 foot long. Wow. A number of videos I've produced has featured antennas in small gardens and this really continues the theme. A viewer of this channel recommended that I looked at the half square antenna. Now this is not an antenna I've ever used before. So I thought, well why don't I install it and see just how well it works. Now for the last few weeks I've been using a doublet in my garden. It's just a random length, I think it's about a 75 foot top section and I needed to take that down in order to try this uh, half square antenna but I've kept up my ground plane my 20 meter ground plane as a reference so I thought that would be quite useful to do a comparison so let me first of all show you what a half square antenna actually looks like this antenna is a mono band antenna but don't let that put you off I'll come back to that a bit later the antenna is 33 and a half foot long. Sorry, these measurements are imperial. And that's a half wave on 20 meters. And then you've got a leg at either end, which is a quarter wave on 20 meters. Those two legs don't go down to ground. And in fact, in the one that I've erected, the, the uh, um, bottom of that leg is around about four or five feet above the ground. Those two vertical legs are fed in phase and it creates a vertically polarised antenna. The top section radiates very little, at least that's what, what is claimed, and the gain is around about 3 dB. Radiation is broadside to the antenna. The antenna is fed at the top left-hand corner. It provides a good match to 50 ohm coax, but I would advise that you install a line isolator just um, as the coax goes into the antenna. Here you see a typical radiation pattern. The horizontal radiation uh, in both directions um, is broadside, as I said just now, and is fairly broad. The vertical radiation peaks at around about 20 degrees, which is pretty good for general DX. Now you can see from the dimensions, this is a very easy antenna to fit into quite a small garden. The top section is what uh, about 11 meters about 11 meters long and it doesn't uh, need any particularly high support either. Now as regards the gain, the gain is claimed to be anything between 2.5 dB to 4 dB. I think the general um, average would be 3 dB gain. It depends on which uh, reviews you read and so forth, but uh, I would regard it as uh, uh, an antenna with 3 dB of gain. Now, dB of gain over what? Well, generally speaking, the 3 dB gain is referenced to a quarter wave, a ground-mounted quarter wave. So it's quite a reasonable gain. It's rather like doubling the power of your transmitter. So it's worthwhile having. Now the dimensions, I've seen various dimensions. Um, some of the dimensions are a bit longer than I've used. Uh, I don't quite understand why, but anyway, the dimensions I've come up with are the dimensions which create resonance, and they make sense that the, the 33 and a half foot top section is, generally speaking, a resonant length on 20 meters, and the 16 and a half verticals is just about right for vertical radiators. So that's what I've come up with and that gives um, me some, some, some good results. And one thing which I can't actually explain is that this antenna seems to have lower noise than my other vertical. Uh, and I can't really explain that at all. True that uh, the half square is in a different location by about 35 feet or so. The doublet I had um, had a higher noise level than my ground plane vertical. But now this half square has got a slightly lower noise than on 
the ground plane. So, so I am actually reducing the noise. I'm not quite sure why that should be, but I have actually seen it mentioned before that the noise seems to be slightly lower on a half square, which is another, another bonus, I suppose. Here's how I set it up in my garden. I used a spider mast at the left hand side which is around about 28 foot at the moment. It will go up to about 40 foot and at the other end I used a fiberglass spider pole. Although this spider pole is nearly 40 foot long I wanted lateral strength and I only needed to go up around about 22 feet or so. So I just used the lower section and using the lower section gives me a much stronger structure. I installed hose clamps at the bottom of each section to stop it sliding down. Don't use the hose clamp to clamp the larger section, just put it at the bottom of the slimmer section to stop it slipping. Now if we go back to the original drawer and you'll see in the bottom left it can be fed as a voltage uh, antenna, in other words a voltage feed. And the easy way to voltage feed an antenna is to use a 49 to 1 unun. Now we're familiar with the 49 to 1 unun because it's used in N-fed half waves. If you look at the dimension of this antenna, it is actually a full wavelength long on 20 metres if you take the vertical, horizontal and the other vertical section. That means to say it's a half wave on 40 metres. So if we attach a 49 to 1 unun at the bottom left, we can actually feed the antenna as a half wave on 40 metres. It also will operate as a half square antenna on 20 metres and it should also operate as an NFED half wave on 15 and 10 metres. So this monoband antenna should be able to work on four bands, which is very nice, particularly for the small garden. And this is the way I set it up. You can see one end of the antenna is dropped down vertically a metre away from that metal spider mast to that shouldn't cause any problems at all. The other end is run down the fiberglass mast and I attach one of my homemade 49 to 1 ununs at the base and I'll try to remember to put a link at the bottom of this video. And then you need to make sure that you put a line isolator and you can just see the line isolator um, at the feed point of the uh, 49 to 1 unun. Now here's something you might be interested in, the way I support the fiberglass mast, because I'm forever missing about with antennas, putting up a fiberglass mast, taking it down again. And what I've got is one of these um, items that you sort of rotate and drill a hole in the ground for fence posts, I think. I bought this is off, off of Amazon for about 22 or £23, pounds, I think. And it's great, you just rotate it, um, get it well into the ground, it's nice and stable, then you can then strap your fiberglass mast to it, and um, then when you're finished you just uh, take it out of the ground and uh, there's uh, just put a bit of saw back and job done. It's not a permanent um, way of doing it but it's a very quick way of putting it up for two or three months and uh, I've used this method quite regularly. So having carefully measured the antenna out and erected it, it was time to plug it in and uh, check the uh, matching. 14 megahertz yeah, it looks, yep, yeah, looks good. Uh, seven megahertz. Yeah, it's a, almost a perfect match there on seven megahertz. Twenty-one megahertz, good. Twenty-eight megahertz. Yep, yeah, it's good. Um, the old IC seven three double I say old, but it is getting a bit old now, isn't it? The IC seven three double I'm using a, 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 an antenna, I'm using a half square antenna which is designed for 20 meters and it's acting as a sort of a, effectively an end fed half wave on 40 meters but the uh, the actual um, maximum height of the antenna is only about 20 feet above ground so it's not very high at all. So that's the story from this end Jeff. It was sunny but it's um, it's uh, cloudy now and it's quite a chill wind blowing. I think it's coming down from the north, quite a chill wind blowing. From Golf 3 Oscar, Julia Victor. Well, I only just got on the frequency, but I knew there was somebody there, and I heard you saying, saying you were not copying, and I wasn't copying anything.
QSL, you're 59 at the moment, 59 in your last over. Peter, my name is Marcel and the QTH is near Bratislava, Slovakia. QSL? You're okay, QSL, Marcel. You're excellent signal, beautiful audio, very, very strong. Um, you've got a lot of stations calling you. Have fun. Good weekend. From Golf 3, Oscar, Julian, Victor. Uh, take care, Peter. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. And here's a short comparison between the 20-metre ground plane and the half square on some signals from the US. This is the vertical. That's the half square. That's the vertical. That's the four square. Vertical. And the four square. Well, that's the half square antenna. I hope you could hear the difference on that uh, recording just then from the US. There is, I would say, there is about 3 dB difference. Um, it's certainly noticeable. I mean, obviously, there's some directivity there. Um, I should explain, my, my aerial is running almost, ver almost perfectly north-south, so I'm beaming east-west. So... Uh, North America is not quite um, the optimum, uh, but it's not far off. Uh, I suppose the Caribbean would be uh, be um, the sort of perfect uh, target. But anyway, because it's pretty broad, it seems to cover North America fine, um, and it covers Europe and, and Asia pretty well. I haven't used it an awful lot so far, because I've only had it up for about a week or so. But... Every time I do a comparison between the ground plane and the half square, it's either very similar or the half square has got this improvement. And as I say, it's around about 3 dB. Now, 3 dB may not sound a lot, but it is uh, a difference. It's like doubling your power. And as far as the station at the far end is concerned, you will probably just hear that uh, your signal a little bit better than you would otherwise do. Now, the other thing, of course, is that it seems to have a low noise level, and I, I really don't understand that. Um, I haven't got a particularly high noise level, but it's by no means low. And um, it's certainly, since I've put the antenna up and when I've do, done the A-B test between this antenna and the vertical, the noise is lower on the on the, the half square and the noise on the vertical was lower than my doublet. So there's a significant improvement between the doublet and this half square antenna. Now look closely at the waterfall display. At the moment I'm on the ground plane. In a second I'm going to switch over to the half square. There we are. Now you'll see the noise level has gone down on that waterfall display. I'm now going to switch back to the ground plane and there you are you'll see the noise level coming up I hope you can see that on the screen now it also works very well on the other bands uh, on 40 meters it's basically an end fed half wave the good news is that the current part the, the part that radiates is in the center of the antenna albeit only about 20 foot above the ground but there again that's probably representative of a lot of 40 meter dipoles in small gardens I've had a QSO on 15 metres, I've had nothing on 10 metres. Um, I expect it to be formed very similar to an N-fed uh, half wave on those two bands, an N-fed 40 metre half wave, but of course the vertical elements are going to play a part. So need time to actually uh, find out how it works, but it certainly does work and it gives a very good match on those bands. So really and truly it's a great antenna for the small garden. I mean. If you've got a small garden, you can get 3 dB gain, albeit on 20 metres. It's worth looking at. And when you find that the antenna will also work on 40 metres, 15 metres and 10 metres, it's got to be an attractive proposition. There's no easy way of making it work on the uh, 18 or 17 metre band and the um, uh, 12 metre band. Uh, you, you can load it up. The only thing is that um, you may get some heating with the ferrite core. Uh, so I haven't explored that yet. And if you do try that, just bear that in mind. You don't want to uh, um, <laughs> burn up your... Well, you won't burn it up. But anyway, you don't want to do some damage because the core um, heats up in the enclosure. 
So, um, very simple. Basically, um, you need a 49 to 1 transformer. It's very easy to make your own, provided you get the core. Mine was a, what, what was it, 230-43, I think, a 43 material. Um, and you can pick those cores up for as little as about six or seven pounds. And uh, as I say, I'll put a link below this video so that you can think about making your own. You may want to buy your own anyway. Um, the, 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 the transformer that I designed will only handle around about 100 watts. So if you've got 100 watt trend you will have no problem. If you've got a linear, then you need to think about um, making it more beefy, which normally means you've got to stack uh, probably three cores. Um, but I, I have never made one of those transformers for, for that sort of power racing. Um, I'm still stuck on 100 watts. Bit of additional advice, if you take the upper section off of your spider pole, do remember to cover the exposed tube because you don't want water dribbling down there. And the other thing is um, I've wrapped my uh, 49 to 1 Anun -un in a cling film. I'm not sure whether it would last, but anyway, I've wrapped it in cling film to give it a bit of protection from the weather. Uh, time will tell whether it uh, stays like that. But anyway, you do need to provide some protection and ensure 49 to 1 Anun -un is already weatherproofed. Using the IC705, let me show you how well this antenna works without an ATU. Bottom of 40 metres, 10 watts out. Top of 40 metres, 10 watts out. 20 metres, bottom, full power out. Top of 20 metres, full power out. 21 megahertz, full power at the bottom of the band, full power out at the top of the band. And 10 metres, full power out at the bottom of the band, and at uh, 29 megahertz, again, full power. So you certainly don't need an ATU with this antenna and uh, the 49 to 1 uh, an unfeed. Some of you, I'm sure, will be wondering if you can turn the antenna around the other way so that the coupling section, the half-wave coupling section, is near the ground and the two vertical elements are uh, basically pointing upwards. Well, first of all, it's not easy to voltage feed it in that configuration. You'd have to feed it with coax and then it would be a monoband antenna. Secondly, in a small garden, I guess that uh, that half-wave coupling section would be fairly near the ground and there'd be all sorts of obstacles which would affect uh, its actual performance. And finally, as far as I can make out, if you do turn it upside down, although it works, it doesn't seem to work quite as well as it does in the original configuration you see here. So my advice would be to stick with what uh, I've shown here on the screen. And I hope that perhaps uh, you will try this antenna. I hope it encourages you to try. Get out in the garden. We've still got a bit of bit of good weather. Um, we certainly haven't got any bad weather at the moment in the, in the Northern Hemisphere, at least in the part of Europe I am. I can't speak for other parts of Europe. But I um, appreciate you uh, watching this video and supporting this channel. It's great. Um, don't forget that we do have a good supply of uh, ham radio equipment down at our Portsmouth uh, uh, depot. We've got the new Yaesu FT710 coming along, um, which is, um, is quite exciting. There's also another transceiver coming along, which I can't tell you too much about. In fact, I can't tell you anything about it. But there is a new transceiver coming along, which uh, will uh, be of interest. I've got no further information, really, that I can let you have because I, the information I've got is so vague that it would uh, it would be meaningless, really, and could be cause confusion. In the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. You take care. Let me know how you get on with the half. What is it called? The the half. Um, the uh, half square antenna gracious me can't even remember the name now um the half square antenna let me know how you get on with the half square antenna be interested to hear from you take care speak to you in the next video bye for now